First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Hey, he's back once again with First Order Radio, your host, Dr. Alain Bay. I'm getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim. Hello, you here, brother? Peace. Peace. There we go. Now we on. All got right. Got you, got you. All okay. right. How you doing tonight? Doing well. Very well, God. How you doing? No, oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. We're getting ready to break down that movie that everybody is talking about, Lucy. All right. So we're going to um get into some real deep information about the components of the brain and, and all that good stuff and see where they was going at with that movie. And where they fell that, you know, because, um, you know, racism is strong in Hollywood. Um, They never depict, you know, very rarely do they ever depict um, properly. Just like they got white folks um, imitating Egyptians. Um, Mm -hmm. Same thing here with Lucy, in which that, when you're talking about Dagonesh, which that's what her name was or is in the so-called, you know, um, you know, African language, we find that, um, in particular, it was right around the area of Lake Victoria, they refer to it as, or in which that man emerged from out of what is called the moon, mm-hmm. all right? Um, obviously, the moon was symbolic to the fact of the crater of that area, and Man is said to emerge from out of that area based on Robert Leakey, um, his father, Louis Leakey, who leaked it out back in the 1950s. In the 1950s, that is what the first people on this planet. All right. And that meaning that all of the races emerge from African genes. Now, this has been proven um, here recently in which that Oriental states, recent articles coming from out of Hong Kong, 
that states that Chinese come from Africa or from African people. Mm. The European is said to be one third African and two third Asian. All right. So that shows um, based on genealogy, the African gene is the strongest. But notice in the movie, no African was seen. They went straight to making Lucy a monkey mm. or a higher form of a monkey in which that they produced the same scene in which that you see Adam and Guide on top of the Sicilian Chapel painted by Michelangelo of their fingers touching. You see the same thing takes place with Lucy, this blonde hair, blue eye, um, pasty skin uh, female and this so-called monkey known as Lucy um, touching fingers in order to show um, that connection as if she was the creator or can we say that the monkey, Lucy, was the creator of humanity? That's what they would want us to state because when you go back and study, Lucy dates back to about 2.8 million years ago. But they don't want to talk about the information in which that has been found within Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremore, in which that states that 2.8 billion years ago, humanoid people was on the planet Earth. Mm-hmm. So, um, we see that this European um, blind-haired, blue-eyed female was able to achieve 100% usage of her brain. But in the beginning stages, in order to access that, there was drugs in which that was put inside of her, of her abdomen, inside of her stomach area or region, in which that symbolizes, of course, the womb, and then the drug symbolizes the impregnation with actually this blue-looking force or energy, which um, was this so-called drug in which that they had. But when you get into the occult, there's an energy in which that lies about two inches above the physical body called your etheric body, in which that is light or electric blue. Mm-hmm. Um we know that the abdomen, in particular the stomach area, um, at the belly button and right about an inch or two deep into the belly button and down from the belly button, also into what is called the ovarian palace of the woman and also the sperm palace of the male, that energy can be absorbed into that area to prolong life and to create longevity. When energy is absorbed at the back of the heart and then on the Exhale, um, push to the front to expand the front chest area of the thymus gland and the heart chakra, which actually is seven hearts um, along the center of your chest. There's seven heart chakras, not just one, all right? Um, all of those begin to light up, and based on the emotional damage in which that is take place of the frustrations, the disappointments and relationships and your love affairs, those particular chakras become clogged or stagnated with energy or deficient of energy, as we would say. And so when you practice these particular exercises or rituals, you activate these so-called three DNTNs. We just spoke about the first one, which is the belly button um, or navel. The second is the heart chakra. Actually, the heart would be um, is one of the largest ones. Actually, it's the largest one. Um, then, of course, the third eye, you are able to absorb energy at the medulla oblongata, which is called the mouth of God, and then also project that energy to the third eye, which actually there's all seven eyes. You have your two physical eyes and then five other eyes along from the eyebrow, in between the eyebrows, up along um, the forehead at the um, top of the head as well as also at the hairline etc. There's 
actually are seven eyes and which that stretch along that area also. Seven chakras or minor chakras in which that makes one component or one chakra in which that referred to as the third eye area. The fourth sephira, which is the spirit door, is actually in between the eyebrows, which is called the center of discrimination. This is where your discernment comes into play at, um, which is one of the gifts spoken of within 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, which speaks about um, your ability in order to discern not just people but spirits or energy. Well, that discrimination center is right there between the eyebrow. That is called the spirit door or death, which is the gateway in order to communicate with the dead or to tap into the ionosphere where the so-called living ancestors or the living relatives reside at, all right, Uh, which is about 62 miles up into the sky, the ionosphere, and it stretches out to um, the uh, the magnetosphere or what is called the Van Allen belt, all right. Um, That is where the ancestors go to. That is also what we refer to as the astral plane, all right? When you go to sleep at night, you go there to the astral plane, which actually is the ionosphere. So when people speak about you coming out your body, there's a cord on which that is attached to the physical body and also to the spirit or spiritual soul, in which that comes out. Uh, when you dream, when you have visions, lucid dreams, etc., and you travel into these different levels of the astral plane. And the word astral means star. And what becomes a- accumulated within that particular atmosphere before it falls to the planet Earth is stardust energy, in which that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. But when it comes in, it comes in through the north and south pole, in which that creates the aurora borealis, or what is called the northern and southern lights. Now, I'm saying all this just to break down a beginning stage of what takes place within the movie. Scientific report states that neuromelanin, which is brain melanin, is very important in the neural tissues to direct and transmit the flow of electrical um, current via the nerve cells, which is the neurons, to all portions of the brain. And that flow is what we call consciousness. So, in effect, neuromelanin is consciousness. So, the more melanin that you have um, that you can activate within your brain, the more consciousness you have. That's the whole point of meditation is mm-hmm. to gain more mm-hmm. access to the brain cells or to the neuromelanin um, centers um, in order to incorporate more of the soul incarnated in the body. In other words... Only about 10% of the soul is inside the body, hence what is called the usage of the 10% of the brain, which they made abundantly clear on the movie. Now, the other 90%, um, as they goes on use. Now, when we look at that, they said that there may possibly be more connections in the human brain than the numbers of atoms in the entire universe. Mm. Now that's some profound shit. That's profound. Oh, yeah. So when sci- yeah, so when scientists perform autopsies and they examine the brain tissue of extraordinary human beings such as inventors, scientists, spiritual leaders of world religious and political figures, in comparison to everyday working, hard working, so called ordinary people, details in the brain, the size of it, the wrinkles. The cell size, the the neurons amount, because the neurons can go beyond billions of neurons to trillions of of um of of neurons, and also the brain dendrites connections differ. In other words, when scientists test attention, these problems with your PC were detected, please call eight six six nine zero four eight nine three five immediately. All right, they're just trying to every way possible to disrupt tonight's discussion. <laughs> you, you noticed that, right? Oh, yeah. 
Always. Yeah, and they even, and they even, and I haven't even gotten hot yet with the information. Right. So this is some so, this is some bullshit already. Just started. <laughs> but in other words, the higher <laughs> conscious levels. So, uh, uh, in other words, individuals who had higher conscious levels, the more differences they seen in the brain structure. That's basically what I'm saying. So, moreover, all the different levels of consciousness are expressed as one collective consciousness. The issue is consciousness in its various levels. What people don't understand is the various levels of consciousness, all right? Uh, for example, of course, we understand you have gamma waves, you have beta waves, you have alpha waves, you have theta waves, you have delta waves, and you have delta theta waves. Um, these are the various states of consciousness spoken of within psychology. So with the gamma and beta waves, you have um, excited or normal waking state of consciousness. At the alpha wave level, um, that becomes the gateway to the subconscious. So therefore, you have the ability for super learning, relaxation, visualization, creativity. You know, that's, that's like light meditation or deep relaxation or a trance-like state. Then you have theta wave consciousness, which is actually subconscious mind. In which that, you know, that's usually a light sleep um, that deals with REM, which is rapid eye movement, dream state, um, deep meditation. Um, so that means that you can reach the same state in deep meditation, um, intuition, memory, vivid visual images, vision slash, you know, uh, lucid dreams, out of body experiences, all of that takes place at that theta wave level. Then you have delta wave and delta theta wave level, which is dealing with the super consciousness, the magnetic and the infinite consciousness, in which that usually deals with deep sleep, dreamless state, um, transcendental meditation takes you to that level, automatic self-healing, um, and your immune function. Now, when you're able to master these particular levels, what they don't tell you in a movie because you only use 10% of your brain, which is just right. conscious mind, you don't tap into the subconscious, super conscious, magnetic conscious, and the infinite consciousness. You only tap into the conscious mind and its two components, which is interpersonal consciousness and interpersonal consciousness. So given the seven states of consciousness, right? Now, they don't tell you in the movie, nor do they tell you on the secret, nor anywhere else, that the science to bridge the gap in between these particular states of consciousness, as I stated, was meditation. Hence, the breath, the breath itself, takes you in each one of these particular meditative states or wavelengths. Matter of fact, the deeper you go, the longer the waves. That's how. That's the transformation. The more excited and the more awoke you are consciously the shorter the waves are the deeper you get into the conscious mind the longer the waves get all right that's that's a that's a good observation because your dna is malleable it's able to change so therefore your dna strands also can get longer with the proper thought as you go into that meditation if your thought is of expanding and lengthening uh, um, your DNA strands. Once you lengthen your DNA strands, um, that creates longevity because now you are tampering with what is called um, the telomeres, which is the telomeres or the extension portions of the elliptical strands of DNA. In other words, you can actually begin to formate three strands, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve strands physical and then 12 strands etherically, all right? Now, this is important because your DNA is directly connected to your brain with long-term memory. DNA is the long-term memory of the whole physical body. Yeah. RNA is the short-term memory of your physical body. So information, the messages first go to the RNA and then get transferred to the DNA, just like information, your experiences, what you see, touch, taste, and smell, 
becomes information within the short-term memory and then is transferred to the long-term memory. All right? Understand what I'm saying because we're going to start getting a little bit deeper here in a second. All right? You understand that at the center of the brain is a gland, all right, which is called the highest endocrine gland. And this gland is being compared to a photoreceptive eye, all right, which is called the pineal or the third eye, all right. French philosopher René Descartes, or Descartes, believed that it was the principal seat of the soul, which we call the personal star, right. Now, that's no coincidence when Chauhudi symbolized the various states of consciousness through another form of him, which is actually a form of Heru. Heru and Chakuti together becomes Heru Kahuti, which is the form for consciousness would be Kansu. Kansu means consciousness. Actually, consciousness is the or is is derived, is derived from the Egyptian word Kansu, which was a form of Heru. All right, Kansu. That's very important to understand because Kansu correlates to um, conjugal DNA, a mitochondrial DNA, which is the informational portion of DNA, in which that survives in order to form the physical body. All right. Now, each person acts differently because different parts of the brain are activated. So the difference from high to low states of consciousness or what the ancients are referring to as the fall of man or the degenerative nature of the divine. Mm -hmm. In order to reach deeper into the one's conscious self, an individual must lower and deepen one breath. Simple as that. All right? For you Christian thumpers out there, your Bible thumpers, in the Bible, the kingdom of God is within man. Luke 17, 21. Furthermore, the Holy Bible says that the kingdom of God is not a place in space somewhere, but an actual state of mind. Romans 14, 17. Yes. So when you put these two together, you come up with the concept that they understood what was able to expand consciousness. And what that was is what the Christians Christianity spoke about within Quakerism or the Pentecostal um, um, Holiness Church or the, as they call it, the Holy Rollers, within Sufism, within the Kabbalistic mysticism, within alchemy and magic. All the literature has demonstrated some awareness of the Kundalini process. But this tradition, these traditions are not known or open, you know, as far as their techniques are not open to the average person. No. You know? Now, if you re- get this book, it's called Cosmic Science of the Ancient Masters, written by Hilton Otima. The Cosmic Science of the Ancient Master by Hilton Otima. And he says something he says something very profound. He speaks about the kingdom or the throne um is the mysterious chambers in the skull. And these are the spiritual centers of the golden bowl, which is the brain, which actually is the Kundalini. Called the word Kunda means bowl. Um, and these chambers are the five in numbers. It's talking about the frontal sinuses, um, the spino the spinodial sinuses, um, the maxillary, the max excuse me, the maxillary celery sinus, um, the platitine sinus, and the ethmo the ethmoidal sinuses. So these five sinuses now, he say that it produces communication directly or indirectly to the nasal cavity, which is the nose. In other words, the breath of life. And it is the highest significance to observe that they receive, check this out, the breath of life directly or unmodified as it flows to them through the nose and before any of the other air organs has a chance to select and absorb any substance from the spiritual stream of cosmos charged with every known element. So, 
What is this spiritual stream of cosmos charge? He's talking about prana or chi or ki energy. Okay? Mm. In other words, through your nose. Remember, God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. That's right in the book of Genesis. So, God breathed of himself, herself, itself, into the nostrils of man, which means the mind. So the mind was impregnated by the breath. And the two formed the physical body, hence the kind of ba. Formed the human body into existence from that impreg- um, impregnation. All right, I'm just giving you all some clues here. So mm-hmm. everyone is at a different stage of consciousness. All right, so there's a certain stage you can reach when your intent is to only speak your truth. Not convincing others of it. Now you begin to realize that everyone has a path. In other words, you can't, you cannot conceive a baby that they should be walking when they are only at the stage of crawling. To convince them of that truth is irrelevant. <laughs> That's the same thing what's going on with people. All right. In order to explain to them the science of the Kundalini and it being a serpent, when they've been taught in Christianity that they should run from the serpent because the serpent was one who us in the beginning. But yet God is the one who blew the breath of life into our nostrils and made us a living soul. But yet you're supposed to run from your own physical anatomy. But what they don't tell you is that the Kundalini awakens the brain. As the kundalini energy rises up through the shushuna, large amounts of high octane energy reaches the brain. The energy flows from what we call the reptilian portion of the brain to the thalamus to the cortex and awakens dormant and activated parts of the brain, especially in the frontal lobes, which is called the neocortex. Neo, Mm. remember that name from the Matrix? Oh, yeah. The neocortex. Neophyte. So the whole brain now begins to pulse As the unit generate incoherent High um, Amplitude brain waves Within all frequency bands Maximum altitude Will usually be in the alpha band Because fast EEG activity In the beta and the gamma bands Will be strongly increased In the frontal area So That's the reason why For those who are able to feel the sensation at the forehead, the activation of the third eye, that is the awakening of that particular center or area in the brain, which is the frontal lobes. You neos, or as in the neocortex, you understand. As I was told within the, also I set society up on the round one, for our man, Shekham there's seven states or seven breaths of consciousness. All right? We speak about the 18 breaths, in which that's the average breath in which that the person breathes. That only taps into gamma waves. All right? There's no particular conscious awareness that you have to have to tap into that. It's already at the reptilian brain portion at that breath level. In order to go beyond the reptilian brain and to keep them eyes from shifting to a reptile, you go into mm. nine breaths, which is the limbic area of the brain, which begins the beginning stages of what is called beta waves, which takes about 12 minutes and which that taps you into your tissues, your blood plasma, molecular, molecular, but your muscular level. Then you go lower to 7.5 breaths a minute to reach into your cerebrum, which is the word cherubims in the Bible, um, is activated. And that's the ending beta state, which is about 24 minutes, which taps into your bone density. And you go further down into the conscious level and you tap into um, what we call the sixth breath, in which that taps into the medulla oblongata, which is the mouth of God. And when that's fully activated, you have access to your past lives and, your, and a photographic memory, which, which is alpha waves, which you can actually reach at 36 minutes, and that taps you into what's called your cellular level. Then you have 4.5 breaths a minute, which taps you into your pituitary gland, which is fully activated, which um, after the age of seven, your pituitary gland over the function of the body to produce HGH, which is the growth hormone in which that took you through puberty. However, after puberty, your pineal gland is supposed to come back on, and I'll get to that in a second, but your pituitary gland 
helps with the theta waves, which is actually 48 minutes if you are able to breathe at 4.5 breaths a minute, you can tap into your molecular, molecular structure, which actually your DNA level. Now at three breaths a minute, your pineal gland becomes fully activated and actually supposed to take back over the function of the body, like I said, after puberty. At the state of the pineal gland being fully activated, no disease can exist in the body at this level. Because now you have tapped into delta waves, which is you was able to hold, do the breath, three breaths a minute for 60 seconds, you tap into your atomic level. In other words, the atomic body, all right, the atomic structure of your body. Now, infinite consciousness is reached at one breath a minute. All portions of the brains are activated. See, this is the thing that they were showing you in the movie. All right? Remember, she was at 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. At 100%, she was able to blink out and become part of all, a part of everything in existence. Hmm. If you notice at the end, she said, I'm everywhere. When the question was asked, where was she? And she said, I'm everywhere. Now, of course, that's pranic energy. That was called pranic kundalini. Kundalini prana is the all-pervading energy of the universe. She's everywhere. That's the black mother known as um, Black Madonna. And you see her with her child. The personification of that is the physical structure in which that was brought into existence by the serpentine fire called the kundalini. But at this level, one brain neuron contains 25 billion bits of information. So you have over 100 billion, possibly trillions of brain neurons, and they all contain 25 billion bits of information that you can process. So now at one breath of level, you're dealing with the delta theta waves, which if you was able to keep that breath at 72 minutes, you tap into the subatomic level. And this is what they were showing you in this movie. Mm. Mm. Now, did they mention the breath, the science of breath once? Not one goddamn time. And this is the reason why I can give this information to you because I've studied and I've had teachers to teach me this. The first force is called the universal or original force and is also known as the heavenly energy. It manifests as the energy of all the stars, planets, and galaxies. This vast, all-pervading force nurtures the mind, soul, and spirit of each individual for those who have a soul and everything else in the universe that is manifest. So the word prana itself comes from the Sanskrit word or root pra, which means first, and na, which means the smallest unit of energy. So prana may also mean the first breath. Hence, God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. Hence, prano, the first breath was put into the body, hence the kundalini, the most basic unit of the universe, which is the subatomic particles, or what is called the star, stardust particles. Scientists, quantum physicists have now figured out that more than 90% of your physical body is stardust. Huh. It's stardust. Mm. Wow. So prana is the universal life force energy. It's the sum total of all the forces in nature. The breath, which is oxygen, is the external manifestation of prana. Heat, light, electricity, magnetism, manifestations of prana. By exercising control over your breath, you can control the subtle prana internally. So you control heat, light, electricity, magnetism, and all the manifestations of prana through your mind. Because control of prana means control of mind. The breath directed by the under the control of the will is vitalizing and regenerating force which will what cause you to utilize consciousness more so for self development and for healing any and many incurable so called diseases in your system. The healing of others as well as also various other useful purposes. You see her be able to dematerialize and rematerialize as she was going up into those various stages. You saw her when she dematerialized. She was on the, um, she was in the bathroom and her body was coming apart. She was dematerializing. 
And then the next scene, she was back together again. She rematerialized. That's why he was talking about that after 40%, you have to learn how to master, after 40% activation of the brain, you have to learn how to master your physical body. You have to learn how to control your physical body. And how you do that, I just told you, control of prana means control of the mind. Yeah. And how you do that, exercise and control over your breath. Once again, control of prana means the control of the mind. And how you do that? By exercising control of your breath. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, nobody came and ever ex- explained all this shit to you. So you better no. start giving me my goddamn props. Go, Dr. Ali. Oh, yeah. The practice is not the mind or the soul, but it's rather the force or the energy to which that the soul manifests activity. And the mind manifests thoughts. Now, we know that thought travels 24 billion miles a second. In the occult, it is known as astrolite, and the word astro means star or starlight. Starlight, star bright, the first star I've seen tonight. Those who do not possess healthy amounts of melanin cannot experience or make Asiatics, hence, from the astral light, as those who do. Understand the material world, which is Asia, is established in the astral world. Prana is a stream that runs the physical and mental machinery of life. It is the substance of the human aura, the colors of the mental state, and are manifest in that substance. You don't believe me, guys? Read a book that's called The Human Aura, Astral Colors, and Thought by Swami um, Panchadashi. The mind cannot operate without the help of prana. Therefore, prana is the sum total of all late forces and powers which are hidden in man, woman, and which lies everywhere around us. Remember, she stated that I'm everywhere. So she became one back with the prana kundalini. All forces, all powers, and prana springs from the fountain or common source. Within the Sanskrit, it's called Atman. Atman. A-T-M-A-N. Atman. Well, Atman is Atma, which is Atum, which is Amen, or Adam Kadman. Mm-hmm. The Kemetic, or Tamarian, is Atum. Within the Kabbalistic Hebrew, Aramaic is Adam, Kadman, the heavenly man. So the fountain or the common source, just like Adam is known within the Christianity as the common source for humanity. But Adam's physical body first existed, as the Quran says, in a different state. Matter of fact, if you read your Quran, it states that Adam, Eve, and Iblis all was cast down from hence this state. This state is what we call heaven or paradise. So before the physical manifestation of the body, it was spirit, astral. And what is the astral derived from? Astral derived from the black energy in turn from black matter. All physical force and all mental force came under the category of prana. Whatever moves or works or has life is but an ex- um, a manifestation or an expression of prana. Whether it's akasha, or ether, all or nothing but exp- um, expression of prana. Prana is related to the mind and through the mind to will and through will to the individual soul and through this to the supreme being, which hence is your higher self. The power of the mind is the sum total of all the forces of the mental plane. It includes the power of thought, the power of will, the power of feeling, and the power of desire, ambition. To use the power of the mind, it must be in conjunction with the breath of life, which they never tell you about. They just always show you just the mental aspect. But the mind needs the breath of life. The breath of life is the mediator between the mind and the body. The first essential thing is to be able to direct every mental action towards the goal in view. And this direction must be not may not be just occasional. It has to be constant. 
You have to have a constant goal in your mind, a constant thought. And with that thought, you're able to go into the different levels of consciousness through the breath, as I may mention, you are able to magnetize yourself. Remember, the three breaths a minute is the magnetic consciousness. So you was able to breathe three breaths a minute for 60 minutes, which is one hour. You'll be able to magnetize the thoughts that you have into existence. Because everything comes from the astral plane, which is, which, which is a, a materializing form of prana. After the astral is the ethereal, and then after the ethereal is the physical. So, astral once again means. So, remember we stated we stated earlier that three hundred thousand tons of stardust energy for the planet Earth daily. All right. So you, as a melanated being, and being that your body is more than ninety percent composed of stardust, what are you supposed to do? Obviously, the stardust, the black. Um, matter, the dark energy, all of that correlates to your melody. And you have to absorb that to expand your consciousness and create an upswelling of energy called the Kundalini at the base of the spine to raise it through the chakra system back into the brain where it creates the expansion of mind. This is why when you see the dots, the two wings or the caduceus, the wings, the two wings symbolizes the expansion of the brain. The left right hemisphere of the brain being open or awakened or, um, in other words, that angelical or angle of light now is able to manifest because now the energy was able to hit you properly. Now, the, the second essential thing that you, um, that is to make a mental image or every mental thought positive. When you think about a thing, all your emotions that you have, your intentions, create positive energy or that positive image in your mind. The third essential thing is every mental action constructed based upon a deep-seated desire to develop, to increase, to obtain, and to um, basically achieve. All right? This is the sign on how to use the brain. So if your thoughts is to mortality, then that has to be the forefront of your thoughts. It's planning. Nothing else um, can be more about than that. It is to have a husband or a wife or to mm. just have love. Mm. Be loved or to gain fame or fortune or success or whatever the case is. All that comes through the brain, comes through The mediator between the mind and the body is the breath. The breath takes the body is that table and transfer that part with the intentions and the, and the emotions and desires to transfer um, um, all of that is transferred from the mind. All right. Now we spoke about interpersonal consciousness. What is is self consciousness, and it means consciousness of one's own act or state or belonging to or originating in oneself, aware of oneself or as the um, object of the of observation of others. That's interpersonal consciousness. Then you have intrapersonal consciousness, which means awareness of one's associations. Then you have consciousness, or what we call life consciousness, which means aware of one's own existence, sensations, and environment, capable of thought, will, or perception. It is responsible for collecting information, storing information and memory, um, making rational decisions, causing deliberate behavior. A person who has the tendency to relate to the objects in this apparent reality as completely solid, just what they believe. However, the truth of the matter is that everything is light energy. Matter is nothing more than dense light, slow down, that is crystallized. The consciousness of the average person actualized this hologram or this holographic 
illusion as reality or apparent reality at seven tenths of a second. Hmm. Yeah, yo, there, there was a damn time limit on this shit. <laughs> Well, check this out. What Frank Barr said, he's a scientist, a researcher of physics at the, um, a physician at the California Institute for the Study of Consciousness. This is what he stated. He said that light sensitivity molecule melanin found throughout the body may be a holographic film in the brain. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What, what did he, hold up, hold up. Uh. Hmm. The light sensitive molecule melanin found throughout the body may be a holographic film in the brain. Mm. David Brom said that matter is a kind of condensed or frozen light. Bar say melanin, which is the most primitive universal pigment in living systems and which is involved in a huge number of biochemical interactions direct the activities of other molecules and in fact eats light and converts it into other forms of energy in order to maintain and evolve matter. God damn. Mm. Wow. It is, he claims, a kind of slow down light molecule at the crossroad between biological matter and biological energy. In the brain, he believes that melanin acts as a black hole, which makes the holographic patterns possible. Cut him. Now, when you go back to the movie Lucy, you begin to start seeing that when she touched people, she gave energy to them. She seen um her best friend, she hugged up her best friend, and the energy was all up and down her back. This prana, this chia key energy. Remember what we just said, that the melanin molecule eats light. It eats it, literally. Your melanin, which is your melanocytes, eat light and converts it to other forms of, of, of energy. Magnetism, heat, light, so, when you go into the subconscious mind, which means underlaying awareness, we know that the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's fantasy. All it knows is that that's what you compute into it. It accepts the messages it receives as true, whether or not they're based on actual facts. So, you see why the reason why the majority of people are so got crazy. <laughs> Because they've been indoctrinated with information, right, with lies, indoctrination, dogma, fallacies. But the subconscious mind is responsible for the regulating of the bodily functions, such as breathing, memory management, goal-seeking, creativity, automatic behavior. The brain controls the portion of the psyche called the involuntary system, or what's called your involuntary nervous system. So, you use your breath, even though it's stimulated from the subconscious, to tap into the superconscious, which means being above or being in space. So now, superconscious means that you're now in the fifth dimension, or what symbolizes dealing with energy or light. So now you're beyond time and space, which deals with the fourth dimension, which is apparent to the so-called five senses. And when we really think Actually, there's only one sense, which is feel or touch. The so-called senses um, exist within limitation with no means of escape. The superconscious mind happens to be the magic storehouse of miraculous powers. But what miraculous powers happens once you tap into it? Well, you go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the first through the 11th verse. It's taught about the spiritual gifts called the nine fruits of Christ, which is received by the Holy Spirit. All right? Wisdom, knowledge, gift of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning the spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. All right? Meaning, psychemistry, all right, which if you don't know what psychemistry is, I'll give you a little blurb on it. Basically, it's the ability of touching a physical object 
and identifying a person by their auric energy residue, uh, which is a thought wave, which is left on that particular item. So if you go in a room and pick up someone's shirt, you know whose shirt it is because of the auric energy in which that you have felt prior to, you're able to pick and discern who energy it is in which that was left or impressed upon that particular item. Then you have, um, like we said, um, the, the miraculous powers, which is actually alchemy, levitation, clairvoyance, clear audience. Precognition, intuition, telepathy, you know, uh, clear sentience, clear guessings, all of these things is part of that. All right. So these are the miraculous gifts and was that you receive by tapping into that consciousness of super consciousness. All right. This is where the concept of actually Superman comes from. All right. It comes from them understanding what takes place in the super conscious mind. Then you have the magnetic consciousness, which means to attract, basically the attracting power beyond any distance. So great that the force even controls the rays of the light from the sun. And then the last is infinite consciousness, which means the quality of being unlimited, boundless, existing between, beyond time, space, and quantity. All right, so you have to understand what this is. When you're talking about personally, you're talking about your seven chakras, your seven major chakras. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going toward the nine chakra system and eventually we're going toward the 12, 13 chakra system. And some of us are already there. Right? Because some of us really practice this shit and not just talk about it. Right. I didn't just pick up one book or two and said, hey, it's time to become a lecturer. I've been doing this shit for nearly 30 years. Okay, so um, understand this, All right? So when we talk about the seven states of consciousness, um, the chakra system and the kundalini, all of that correlates to um, everything that we just made mention of. Interpersonal consciousness would be correlated to the ego or the spirit or lower self, which is the base root chakra. All right, um, the beginning beta state would be interpersonal consciousness in which that would be related to the navel chakra. Um, the ending beta state would be uh, what we call life or self consciousness, which is solar, um, the solar pla um, solar plexus. The alpha state, uh, which is um, the altered states of consciousness or the subconsciousness, is the heart chakra. Um, the theta state, which is super consciousness, is the throat chakra. The delta state, which is mag um, mag consciousness is the third eye which we refer to as the first eye and then um, delta theta state which is um, infinite or quantum consciousness is the crown chakra okay which is also called the collective unconsciousness which is the soul or the higher self so you have all of these states of consciousness chakras kundalini expressions um Breath patterns to break through, you know, the highest force in man or the most powerful, but we cannot use these powerful forces without acting through the super conscious field. Therefore, if you want to understand and apply all the forces you possess, you must train the mind to act through the super consciousness as well as the consciousness and the subconsciousness. And you can go even further, like you said, into the magnetic and the infinite consciousness. So, it is when we combine mental actions in the consciousness, subconsciousness, superconsciousness, and beyond that we get the results we desire. See, I'm telling you the shit that the secret didn't tell you and that the movie Lucy can't tell you, that the movie Limitless can't tell you, that the movie mm -hmm. Matrix can't tell you. Mm -hmm. But this is really for those who are the practitioners. Right. Some niggas just like a good talk, like a good game to get scammed, mm -hmm. but this is what they like. They enjoy that shit. They want the sensationalism. That's why niggas go to church. They want to hit a right. nigga hoop and hop and, and, and spit on and spit on your ass. And the Lord <laughs> says, <laughs> and the name of you. <laughs> That's what they want. Niggas spitting on them. Niggas go 
Let's go get that quick fix. <laughs> right, right. Get that quick fix. Mm. Oh Lord, he. Oh Lord, he. He tore it up. He spoke some good words. What are you saying? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is that? You don't know what the fuck you say? He's so busy hacking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? So, <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, there's a difference between a predominantly left hemisphere thinker and a predominantly right hemisphere thinker. The left hemisphere thinker uh, who uses that side of the brain, which is the masculine brain, which is the analytical, linear, verbal, rational side. But the right hemisphere of the brain, which is the female, feminine, um, intuitive, holistic, sexual, and abstract side of the brain. All right. So what causes the connection between these two? Well, there's an ancient art called the Anoma Valoma, which is the alternating nostril breath technique, in which that you would close off your right nostril, breathe your left nostril for four seconds, close both nostrils off for 16 seconds, and then hold the left nostrils and breathe out the right nostril for eight seconds, and then you reverse that, and you do that each one 20 times. And what that does is produce the dendrites and the synapses, the connections in between the right and the left hemisphere of the brain, which is the neuron cells, to fire off properly between the two, in which that increases um, melanin and the speed of the nerves and the brain messages, which are transmitted between both of those hemispheres. And all these signals transmit throughout the bodily nervous system or network. In other words... Um, it's not just the 12 pair of cranial nerves in your brain that become electrified, but also the 31 plus 2 nerves in your spine that becomes electrified and which that branches out to all your endocrine glands and organs in your body, hence producing this magnetic energy within your organs and within your endocrine gland. So we'll practice certain breathing exercises, meditation techniques, as I just gave one, alkaline water, proper eating habits, you know, we learn to use both aspects, you know, properly. All right. We also achieve an internal balance of the inner female and male aspect, which is called the yin and yang, the shakti and the shiva, the also set. All of this is the same thing. So in order to reach the level of these extraordinary individuals, you must supply the brain with plenty of oxygen, ra or prana, as it's called. Modern science says that the brain cells need more than 10 times as much oxygen as any other cell in the body. So, it's good that everybody, yeah, we got the history down pat. Healing colors was good. We got the history down pat. All right, you got um, urban kryptonite, which that deals with the food. All right. Now, the next thing to do is take it to the next level, and that's the science of breath. And be coming with that real soon, a documentary on that called Blow, in which we're going to have a cast of um brothers and sisters, in which that is on this level, in which that I'm talking about, that are actually practitioners, not just talkers, but doers. All right, so it's coming real soon, so just stay tuned for that. All right. Um, Brother L, you want to go into anything? Uh, continue yes. Uh, yes. Uh, when you were speaking about the chakras, the seven chakras, the right. first six, the seven chakras. Also, uh, you should look at the human head, which has also seven openings. The two nostrils of the nose, right. the two eyes, the two ears, and the, and the mouth. Right. You know, and all the next right. seven chakras as well, you know, related. Uh, that's related, you know, also to the, uh, 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 the, the the cycle of the human body. You know, the, the, it changes every cycle, every seven years, you know. Seven uh, years, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all that's related. And all that's related to the seven no uh, days of the week, uh, the, the mm-hmm. three times seven, 21, legally uh, uh, it's supposed to be an adult. Uh, uh, the two times seven, 14, you guess, well, the year into after uh, puberty, uh, the seven different colors of the colors of uh, 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 and you got the seven sounds of music uh, vibrations. 
and you know, and so on and so on. Yeah. Yes. Where, where, well, there's a yes. book in which everybody need to get. It's called "Your Forces and How to Use Them" by Christian Lawson, L A R S O N. Get that book. Okay. Check it out. It's yeah. called "Your Forces and How to Use Them," because what it is is that, you know, people listen to me and think, and they want to know how to do magic, but they don't know how to harness energy. Right. You know. Um, and those who do not harness energy always want to deal with it from a negative perspective, want to hurt some damn body instead of helping themselves. Right, exactly. You know? So we got two you know, dichotomies and two jackasses in both extents, on both ends right. when it comes to that. Just one who want to harm and one who don't know, which is ignorance. You know, just because that's the word ignorance. Their, uh, just want to deal with their uh, emotions. Lack of knowledge. Right, 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 exactly. And deal so, with their emotions, you know. And, uh, right, that's all right, they deal right, with their right. emotions. And they want to use them mm-hmm. for negative, you know, in a negative right. sense. You know, back to right. the, well, that's the, reason, that's the Right, that's the reason why these hidden or these um, latent powers was never discussed openly and why this information was hidden from the masses because um, the masses would begin to act like asses. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You want to get yeah, and that's what the, and that's what no. right, and that's what the right, that's what the um that's what the priests did it because that's what they thought the people would do when um begin to start using this information negatively. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of just helping themselves, which that's what they're supposed to be doing is helping manifest higher state of God within themselves. Like I said, they want to harm someone. That's you it. You know, right, 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 and. You know, there's, there's always a there's, there's a barrier on that. You see, when you look at Lucy, you see she never could get a hang of that. You know, she became part of the all regardless of the fact of how many motherfuckers she killed up in there. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us have that concept that we can achieve that, that there's no karma. <laughs> that they that they not under the rule of law called the clock of destiny, which is the zodiacal influence. Some people really believe that. <laughs> right, they believe right. They don't think you come back to them, even though they're good Bible tell them that what goes around comes around, or better yet, you reap what you sow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, this is the mentality, you know, which yeah. that we're working with here on the planet. You know. Um, another part of Lucy, you might remember when her eyes changed to a cat or changed to a reptilian light. Um, what they were showing you is that that happens through different areas in the brain, in particular the reptilian portion of the brain. Recently, I've seen someone's eyes change into a reptile. Mm. And I'm talking to them less than two feet away from them, looking straight wow. in their eyes. And it went from brown or hazel to a clear bluish for slit down the middle of them. Do you have to have special vision for that though? To see that? Yeah. We definitely know that it comes from the reptilian portion of the brain. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about that. Because at the time when it uh, when it happened, the individual was talking about something in which that was so upsetting to them. And that's when it came out of them. Mm. And that's what came out, right? So we know that all these things takes place in the brain, all right? So this is that we know that. Um, let, let's go into the different portions of the brain because a lot of people don't know um, know this information. You have the cerebrum, which actually is the cherubim that is mentioned within um, the Garden of Eden. There were two cherubims that was put outside the, the Garden of Eden to keep Adam and Eve. Um, and Cain from coming back in, as well as those who was already out there, because we know that Cain supposedly found his wife amongst other people, all right, which they don't talk about, which was called the Preanimites, um, you know, um, written by some so-called historians or whatever you want to call them as. But they tried to make the story real and historical, but it's an allegory. Uh, meaning that it's fictional characters are being used 
in order to convey a deeper spiritual meaning behind the storyline or the plot. So that's the same with the word ch- um, cerebr- um, cherubims, which means angels, and your cerebrums, which means um, to cover. The word cerebrum means to cover. You go to Webster Dictionary, it means to expand the anterior portion of the brain. That in higher mammals overlays the rest of the brain and consists of cerebrum um, hemispheres and connecting structures and held to be the seat of consciousness and mental processes. So the angels in which that people talk about, the cherubims, which is nothing but the cerebrums, which is the two um, portions of the brain that overlays the rest of the brain and is the seat of consciousness and the mental processes, that's the angel that they're talking about, or the angels. It's the same two angels where Jesus was um, at the sepulchre or the Sunday in which he rose 6 o'clock in the morning and Mary Magdalene went looking for the body in order to anoint the body. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, the two, and the two angels, um, you know, one story was one and the other one it was two angels. And the two angels said, um, the dead that you look for is no longer here. He is risen. Mm-hmm. All right. Next thing you know, Mary Magdalene see him, you know, dressed up in the carpenter, um, a carpenter outfit, you know, uniform. And he told her, say, look, uh, you go tell the disciples that um, that I send it to my father, who uh, which are in heaven. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, 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 see, you can get caught up in the story if you don't understand the plot. Exactly. <laughs> the symbolism, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the symbolism is that he was talking about to the right hemisphere of the brain. When the Kundalini ascends up the spinal column, which is 33 vertebrates, and then Jesus died at the age of 33, um, it activates the right hemisphere of the brain, in which that brings a holistic point of view. So hence, Jesus went to go be in his father and sit on the right hand side of his father who art in heaven. So all of that is talking about what happens within your physical body. But, of course, many want to take that externally and think that a white man is coming back in order to save them. And it's sad and mistaken. Uh-huh. Uh, we know because you go to uh, 1 Kings 6, 27, and it states, And he sat the cherubims within the inner house, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims so that the wings of the one touched from one wall and the wings of the cherubim touched the other wall and their wings touch one another in the midst of the house. Now, that is exactly what I just finished saying by definition. The cherubims are the cerebrums, the two cerebrums, that inside the skull, which is called the Holy of Holies, which is the right and the left hemisphere of the brain, and they cover the midbrain, which is the third ventricle with the pineal gland overseas. Hmm. So, once again, I can write a movie Externalizing this shit and make you think angels coming out of the sky, you know, like they're doing on on the, on the um, TV show or the series Dominion. Uh-huh. And these angels, Gabriel is getting ready to fuck Michael up, and Michael get ready to be- come on, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you, your niggas better start worrying about the internal battle that's that's going on, the great jihad and the great Armageddon that's happening inside you, exactly. than the one that's going on outside. Uh-huh. It is he within you than he that is in the world. Hmm. Right. That's what they talk about. That's what about, the Lord really. told me. Right, that's what the Lord <laughs> told me. So so we got the right and the left hemisphere of the brain, but then you have the subdivisions, all right, into four lobes. You have the frontal lobes, which we spoke about, which is based on reason and emotions, judgment, and voluntary movement. Then you have um, the the parietal um, lobes, which register pain, feeling of hot and coldness. You have the optical lobes, which is the center of vision. And you have the temporal lobes, which is about about the size of two um, about the size of almonds, two almonds. Um, and these glands reside over the top of the ears. And it's the center of hearing, listening, speech, and memory. Um, the realization of God resides in this area as well as the healing powers of God. All right, so you want to learn how to be a good healer, you actually have to activate 
the chip rollers, which sits directly over top of the ears on the side, side of the head, which is about, like I said, about arm and shape. All right, so you have those portions of the brain. Then you also have the, um, the cerebellum, which is the, um, um, the lower part of the brain, which is located at the cranium of the skull called the amphibian or the lower mammal or mammalian brain. This is where the emotions and the higher um, instincts and the teamwork um, all resides in this region of the brain. It's situated um, beneath the posterior lobe of the cerebral, all right? Um, the center, the white center of the cerebellum takes on the form of a miniature tree, which they refer to it as the tree of life. This is where the tree of life comes from, this knowledge. Um, with the trunks, the branches, the, the twigs, the leaves, all of that is known as the um, what is called the arbor um, vat, a vati, all right, a vata, um, the arbor vata, which is actually when it's translated, it means the tree of life. It's Latin, and when it's translated, it means the tree of life. Mm. So when it speaks about the tree of life in the Bible, now you understand what the concept of the tree of life actually is talking about. It's talking about the cerebellum two portions or um, two divisions within the um, hemispheres of the brain. The, cere um, the cerebral or the cerebellum, excuse me, functions or the physical phase of the sexual organ um, organism and is concerned with the coordination of muscles, the maintenance of bodily equilibrium. All right. And it actually is right above the medulla oblongata. You know, um, the cerebrum, the right um, actually, the left and right half of it is actually called the little brain. All right, so mm. you have the four, um, there are the four neocortex brain centers. You have the left brain, which invokes the image of the um, of the hind brain, then the right brain, and then the in front brain. All right, those um, are the neocortex portion of the brain. Um, the next portion of the brain, you have the limbic system which the medulla oblongata is part of, which the memory um, predominates the medulla oblongata. And actually the medulla oblongata is also part of the reptilian portion of the brain. Um, when you go to Webster Dictionary, it defines the medulla oblongata as the somewhat pyramidal last part of the vertebrate brain continuous with the spinal cord. So it sits right up from the spinal cord. All right, is the upper and enlarged end of the spinal cord. All right. Matter of fact, when the Kundalini comes up and it enters the brain, the first place that it hits actually is the medulla oblongata, and it actually sounds like an axe, a thumping noise when the Kundalini hits that area, because that's actually the doorway or what is called the mouth of God. All right. So mm -hmm. when you go to your Bible, Matthew four four. It states that Jesus said, of course, this is an allegory because he didn't exist. I'm sorry right. for those who are the Bible thumpers out there. Um, you know, he definitely didn't you know white man. But if you want to say that was in the form of a Yahshua, and that Shu is in between Yah and Wei, which symbolizes the higher self and the lower self, then yes, the breath of life controls um, the aspects of the mind and the body. And through the breath, you can achieve unity. Hence, the yoga or the religion, which means the tie of bind back. So if you talk about it in that sense, then yes, Jesus is the breath of life. And God breathed the breath of life into the man nostrils, and man became a living soul. So you was actually born with Jesus. Jesus was born in you. So now you really have a Lord and personal Savior now, because now you really have the real meaning of the word, all right, of Yahshua. Right. Right? And when you sneeze, you say Yahshua. Ah. So the sound that you make when you sneeze is the sound in which that symbolizes the regulator of your life force, which is the breath itself. Stop mm. breathing for three minutes and let me call 911 and see what happens. <laughs> so when you read Matthew 4, 4, it states, Jesus said, and he answered him and it was written, man shall not live by bread alone, bread meaning knowledge alone, by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. Now what do that mean? Okay, well, you break down um, the signs that Jesus symbolizes the breath and then bread symbolizes that knowledge. What does the word mean that proceeds out the mouth of God? I told you that the medulla oblongata was called the mouth of God. 
So the word is the life energy or the cosmic vibratory force. It is where the breath of life enters the body. The breath of life enters at the medulla oblongata or either at the crown, which is at the top of the head, or at the spinal column, which is the sacral bone um, area where the medulla where the um, kutalini resides. One of those three areas is where the breath of life enters at within the body. All right? Um, Grandmaster um, C. Freeman L. taught us this already. All right? Mm -hmm. So this is the most vital part of the human body. It's called the divine entrance, which is the mouth of God. Because the mouth of God, which is the majority of God, is directly parallel to the third eye. It says, for the word or life energy by which man is sustained. So actually, there's a breath technique in which that you draw energy at the back of the head, right at that area. In order to activate the 12 melan melanin sites or centers on the reptilian portion of the brain. Some people only work with two. If you get the book Nutricized by Leila Africa, he states that Europeans only have two activated melanin sites or melanin centers on the reptilian portion of the brain. When actually there's 12. Mm. So all 12 are supposed to be activated. So there's a technique in order to bring energy into medulla oblongata. In Qigong, what you would do is tap on that area 25 times, three times a day at the back of the head, right where um, the little knot poke out at the back of the head, and right up underneath that, where the hollow area is, is where the medulla oblongata is located at. So in the Indo-Kush Vedic text and the Christian scripture, the word, which is mentioned in the book of John, is called respectively oh, or as Christians say at the end, Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so we understand what the word really is. You want to get the real science of it. That area is actually red and gold, or the colors of that chakra, and it's called the area of manifestation. It's also the home of the causal body or one's personal access to the universal library called the Akashic Records. The word Akash is Sanskrit, which means sky, space, or ether. These records are described as containing all knowledge of human existence and the history of the cosmos. Mm, 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 mm. You don't understand? Get a book called Scientific Healing Affirmations by Yogananda. Mm. That's where you broke down it. I'm in. Um, in right. Right. Home. And also the... And the vibrant oh. vibrant vibrant Man. Exactly. Right. So that's the sound on which it activates on the medulla oblongata. Another sound that activated is why. The why sound activates that area and opens up the mouth of God. Notice that Wallace Budge called. The pyramid, coffin, text combined, the book of the dead. When actually it's called the opening of the mouth ceremony coming forth by day and night. But the key word is the opening of the mouth ceremony. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they caught that. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> somebody tell me that. Somebody um hit me in the damn chat room. Did you get what the fuck I just said? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm ghetto tonight, goddamn. I can't be damn professional all the damn time. <laughs> yeah, but the way they say the Islamic prayer, uh, not, 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 not Islamic prayer. I mean the the Adan, called the Adan. Say Allah. Mark Bar, you know, it's it, 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 the same thing. Right, right, um, right. Man. Right, it is. Um, right, right, exactly. Right, those seven stanzas activate the seven chakras, those seven positions. Takbir, Tiam, Ruku, Saja, Jausa. Those seven positions and chakras. Mm-hmm. The seven stanzas or the seven verses 
El Fatiha, which means the opening. The opening of the mouth ceremony. Once again, the opening. The opening of what? Not just the mouth, but also of the eyes of God. The seven eyes of God are mentioned within the 101, 102. Seven eyes. Seven the chakras. Elohim. Right, the seven eyes, so the seven chakras, right. Seven, circle so seven. So the seven, mm. right, the circle seven. Mm. The seven mm. stanzas, or the seven verses within El Fatiha, opens endocrine glands. So you say, Bismillah, the mm. in sound. When you look up the in sound or the ein sound within Arabic and Hebrew, you find that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When your eye, be, your whole body would be filled with light. So the mm-hmm. whole fact of the dawn is bring light into your body through the exactly. recitation of a rhythmic rhyming mode pattern scheme of words. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You can. Hmm. So when you understand what you're dealing with, you can see why make the light is important in the beginning because it is to awaken the Kundalini. But what will you do once the Kundalini is awake? Is the acts. Once you have done enough prayers, will it become time for now that every thought becomes a thought of a law? Mm hmm. No more time or no more need to raise Kundalini because Kundalini has been risen. Even hmm. Salat, which means fire or to raise up, is simply a tool to use to raise Kundalini. But once it has risen, as the Sufis say, now it's time to realize God. Mm-hmm. You become one with God. So mm-hmm. that's the key. All right. So all let's go to the yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. 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 Let's 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 get to other portions of the brain because people are still learning this information. So we done ex- explained um the cerebrum, the cerebellum, dula magata, the different lobes of the brain different sciences of the brain you have the thalamus brain which is two low structure located down uh, within the brain at the base of the cerebrum all right it actually is the sorter for information going into the cerebrum it inter um um interpret pain and pressure and is also involved in memory all right then you have the hypothalamus which is the body control center for regulating thirst appetite temperature body blood pressure Heat or heartbeat, um, metabolism of fat, uh, sugar levels in the blood, uh, what else? Carbohydrates. It also functions in um, rage of pain and pleasure. It helps with the function of the pituitary gland, you know, which is the so called master gland of the body. Um, after puberty, uh, what develops the personality or the ego? The pituitary gland does. It governs also the thyroid glands and other glands in the body through this discretion of a chemical called hormones, or in particular, um, the pituitary gland called HGH, which is the human growth hormone. That's what it's really called, human growth hormone. Um, but like I said, after two, the pipe is supposed to take back over the function of the body. Hmm. You have the hypocampus area of the brain, which is white matter. And if you, now the word hypocampus, the word hippocampus, or hypocampus means force. Now, in the scriptures, when you read about Jesus coming back, how they say he's going to come back? They say he's going to mm-hmm. come back on a white horse. Mm-hmm. Now, if the hypocampus of the brain is white matter, and the name um, hypocampus means seahorse, and that means that that is a white horse. 
Mm. Now, in the Greek tale, it tells you about Pegasus. Now, above our heads, you have the Pegasus constellation. That is a star in the Pegasus area in Africa. It's called Macab. Word Macab means ship, vehicle, or saddle. Anything written upon. Uh, in the ancient, um, later Greek mythology, coming from the Cretan and Minoans uh, mythologies, Pegasus was known as the white winged horse. Or mm-hmm. the winged white horse. So when Zeus, which is, in other words, Jesus or Jazus, uh, which is one of the names of Krishna in Sanskrit, which is Jesus, as we get it within Christianity, he wished to use his lightning bolts. It was Pegasus who brought the lightning and thunder to him. Now, remember when Prophet Muhammad on the night of Maraj, um, um, of Maraj, of El Maraj, on the night where he went up into the seventh heavens, he rode on a horse or a winged creature of lightning called Baruch. Then in the book of Revelation, it tells you in the 19th chapter 11 verse that, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and him that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Okay. Of course, those who deals with esoteric information would not understand esoteric information. I saw heaven open up is talking about the mind opening up, the brain, via the brain, opening up to the different areas in the brain. Behold a white horse, hence the Hippocampus area. And him that rode upon it was called faithful and true. Somebody to Jesus or the pineal gland, which is the master gland of the physical body. And it's connected to the third ventricle. That's what it's talking about. Okay? So, I'm taking things and make it literal. All right, then you have the basil ganglia, right, which is dealing with um, clusters of neurons at the base of the cerebrum. It's one of the brain structures connected with the frontal lobe through the um, substantia nigra, which is um, one of the 12 areas or sites in reptilian portion of the brain, which produces dopamine. There's a black shaped um, area named after Latin phrase for black mass. It appears black because its cells contains melanin. Mm-hmm. Okay. No? Huh? Oh, already did. Already did that already. So, um, you have the um, amygdala. The word amygdala means almonds, which describes the organ shapes. You have two amygdalas. You have right up in near the temple, um, near, near your temples, or near the front of your head. Now, there's an interesting technique in which that when, um, you can imagine a feather touching those areas, actually, and it will flick forward. So it's like you imagine a feather and tickling the right one and the left one, and it switches both forward towards the front two lobes, and which that give you the visualization um, or the ability in order to have more creativity. Lastly, it visualizes your head surrounded in gold light. Now, we know what the pineal gland is, all right, and we know understand the gland is the seat of the soul, right? It's the, master, it's the real master gland of the physical body. Then you have the bed. The gland was called the Indu chakra, the gland that was originally inside of the hippocampus area of the brain. Now it's been reinserted back at the lower portion of the chin. All right, the berry gland controlled at one time the four highest senses: telepathy, intuition, clairvoyance, psychemistry. But now it's been reinserted at the what is called the submental area or what is called the lower chin area. Dr. York speaks about this. And it helps with the activation of the um, psychic centers. You have the palatine chakras, which is what I call the epiphany gland, which is up at the roof of the mouth. It's called the Taurus um, platantinus, all right, which is the Latin name. Um, in the Sanskrit, in the Sanskrit teachings, you have the Shakti Tantra, which they refer to as the 
Tula, or Talu, and the, um, the Lalana, all right, the Lalana Center, all right, in the Taoist teaching is called the Heavenly Pool. Now, what it is, is actually three chakras here that allows the ascending chi or prana spinal region to reach the top of the head. And the three chakras along um, that located the soft palate, which is the roof of the mouth, mediate the descending chi energy. All right? In the center of the descending mouth, there's a small hole that is linked to the third ventricle, which is overseen by the pineal gland, and that for certain periods creates a honey-like substance called chrysum that when swallowed produce cellular regeneration. Now, where we get this information from, um, Dr. Derby Blair speaks about it in the main lecture. He said everyone does not have this gland. Certain melanated males, whom we call the sons of God, they have this gland. He states that the so-called white people do not have this gland. And he says neither do the melanated women. He said if they do, he does not know whether it is a blessing or a curse. Now, I personally have met several conscious melanated women who possess this gland. Oh, uh-huh. And they seem to be very psychically in tune. So, therefore, I would say that these melanated women who have this gland would be obviously the daughters of God. They are female angels incarnated. All right. So, um, this is from my experience. Right, right. Now, you also have, like we said, the reptilian portion of the brain, and this is one of the last brain functions that we go over for the night. Um, all of this, remember, all of this was talking about the brain. That's what the whole movie Lucy was talking about. Now, I can come on here and talk about, you know, extravagant, esoteric shit and um, get you all riled up, but you won't learn shit. This tonight is about learning um, the different areas of the brain so that you know what you're tapping into and what each one does. So the brain stone, which is the reptilian portion of the brain, controls the bodily functions, um, which is breathing and the heartbeat. At the center of the brain lies a, um, a cluster of nerve cells called the reticular um, formation. All right? Now, your consciousness resides at the reptilian portion of the brain. It's connected also to the lower abdomen brain, which is um, when they found, when they studied the lower abdomen brain, which is actually the solar plexus down to the navel chakra, they found neurons in your abdomen, your small and large intestines. Huh. Right? The reptilian brain has a tendency to outwardly project, self-inflict, and self-generate negative thought forms called spiritual entities, which may appear reptilian in nature. This reptilian appear entity or entities are projected from the lower astral plane called the ethereal plane, or what's called the fourth dimension or the first and second overtone of the fourth dimension. All right, this is what David Icke is talking about. Now, when you get into the esoteric understanding of the portion of the brain, you find that when one dreams, one consciousness naturally shifts to the back of the head, which is the medulla oblongata. This is where um, the cases of what's called lucid dreamings occur. All right? One reptilian portion of the brain, which is called the reticular active, um, activating formation, determines the depths of one um, quantum, um, quantum realm dreams. So the reptilian portion of the brain, which is those 12 sites in the brain, those 12 million centers of um, sites in the brain, is what gives you the ability in order to lucid dream. It is one's, um, via one's lucid dreams, one can connect with other forms of intelligence, which the ancient Egyptians considered to be associated with Sirius. In essence, one lucid dreams are one's personal stargate. All right, when you get, you know, um, Orion, which is Osiris, or Osar, is a shaman. Um, Orion symbolizes the um, state of trance. We're dealing with um, hypnosis. All right. The door, which is the lucent dream shift to the back of the head. All right. Um, like we said, deals with Sirius. So you have Orion and Sirius as part of that. And this is all based on the king and the queen chamber in ancient Egypt. You take the um, Khufu or Cheops, which is the largest pyramid, and you overlay it over top of the head. Um, each shaft correlates to one of those particular star constellations, Orion, Sirius on the left side, and Thuban, which is Draco, and, you know, the Big Dipper and so forth on um, the right side. 
when your consciousness shifts towards and beyond the top one's head, whereby one spirit can fly, it flies this harvest, um, and that's actually going to what is called um, the Gingalate Gyrus, or the Corpus um, Solosum, which is the top portion I'm dealing with, like we said, the um, cerebral which is the top coverings of the um, two top coverings of the brain. All right, then it shift towards if you go towards um, what we call Draco or Thuban, one's consciousness can shift towards the front one's head, which induces what's called out of body experiences or what is called the um, right articula, um, which actually scientists have found out that if you place probes on the right portion of the brain at that area, that you can actually create instantaneous out of body experience. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are the areas of the brain. And um like we said we put down earlier, um behind what's really going on with that movie Lucy. We broke down the fact of when she disappeared, it's talking about the uses of the one hundred percent portion of the brain. Um, and we told you how to be able to activate it, which the movie won't tell you. They told you that it was by drugs, something that was put in her stomach. <laughs> Just like on the movie Limitless, it was some drug in which that he a pill, a white pill, a clear pill that he had to take in order to get him to begin to start going beyond the 10 to 20 percent usage of the brain in that movie. Hmm. All right. So like Lucy was you no know, Limitless part two, as some would say. All right, in which that actually fell short, you know, in some sense. I mean, it was all right movie, but a lot of people was enthusiastic, too enthusiastic over it, saying like it was one of the greatest of all time. Slash, <laughs> and I'm like, shit, if that's the case, then y'all niggas need to be listening to this damn radio show bad, and learn how to do that for real. Right, be able to learn that how to do that shit for real and fuck a goddamn movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's fantasy shit. I'm telling you the goddamn truth how to do this. Exactly. Openly. And explaining the shit for free. Exactly. So when niggas start talking about, oh, I'll leave you with some money, nigga, win. <laughs> <laughs> the radio show is free. The YouTube videos are free. You calling me down 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the goddamn morning is free. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck you talking about? <laughs> Exactly. You niggas don't do free with the crack and try to go free at the goddamn gas pump, nigga. And four dollars a goddamn gallon. And see if you get and see if you can get a goddamn gallon for free. <laughs> yeah, go free and, and, and um uh, uh, uh go to the mall and try to get some Tim's for free. <laughs> go to the goddamn um uh, uh what's the mo- yeah GameStop and try to get your goddamn uh uh games for free. You got damn Xbox for free. All you free ass niggas out there. <laughs> don't, wanna, don't 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 even want to give a donation to to a brother who damn dropping a fucking cosmos on your goddamn ass. <laughs> I'm dropping a fucking cosmos on you. Goddamn cosmos. Goddamn universe on your ass. And you stupid ass niggas still mundane thinking. <laughs> I see why panic be damn different with niggas. <laughs> I see why niggas be you upset, know man. Panic, nigga, I see why niggas be. I see why panic be dissing you niggas. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing it too. Act stupid. <laughs> Say some stupid shit. <laughs> Tonight you have listened to First Water Radio. And Dr. Aline get ghetto. <laughs> All right, let's go to our announcement. This Saturday in Columbus, South Carolina, Sirach and Soul Messiah perform, and Dr. Aline L. Bay will be your host for that event. All right, if you want to see further information, please go to Dr. Aline's timeline on Facebook or Website www.drlemelbay.com. <laughs> On our calendar events, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell us, oh dear, please come and join us this Saturday at 2.30. All right? And also, we have Qigong in the Park, August the 16th, at Marcus Garvey Park, formerly known as Mount Morris Park in New York, in Harlem, USA. And we will be performing Qigong, and we will be performing Qigong and Tai Chi, um, Reiki, Pranic Healing, all of the energy modalities, teaching you how to activate more than just 10% uses of your brain. On the backside of the park near the baseball field, and we all accepting donations. All right. Um, any closing remarks, Brother L? <laughs> <laughs> you saw me, Brother Dr. Eileen. <laughs> yeah, you talking about these ignorant Negroes. That's good, though. Yeah. Maybe that'll wake them up, you know. Maybe I'm going to start hitting them, too. I don't blame you. Exactly. There you go. Oh, we talking about why, why I got why I got to pay for my nationality papers and and well, but damn when when the, uh, when, when the cracker asked you to pay for that car, you say, oh, I got to give me a part time job so I can pay for this every month. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and exactly. I don't know how much, but every month, some twice a right. month, but this is just one yeah. time, you know? Right, one time, right? Ain't you know? ain't ain't making you pay money over the, what? How many? How much is a phone nowadays? How much is a how much is a goddamn iPhone? Hold up, an iPhone is five hundred dollars. <laughs> and then, right, and then one hundred and fifty dollars a month. Now let's add one hundred and fifty dollars over twelve months. How much is that? That's damn near fifteen hundred goddamn dollars for a phone over a year. <laughs> Does that make sense? Fifteen hundred goddamn dollars a year. Five hundred dollars. So that's two thousand goddamn dollars in just the one year. With no nationality, no birthright. No. No nothing if well you can call your mama. Or you can call <laughs> you know, or you can call Right, and you can do that for a quarter on a goddamn payphone. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. shit in New York, you can put a quarter in the payphone and get at least two minutes long distance free. Right. Well, at least for a quarter. <laughs> Damn near free. <laughs> I so, so in other words, so in other words um, that's that's why we do what we do. You know what I'm saying? We love you. I'm joking. You know what I'm saying? Somewhat. Some of this shit is real. <laughs> right. All right. Right. Much but, love. Um, right. But much love. Um, you see, we sincere about this. We've been doing this for a long time. Getting the word out to you. Ain't nobody else driving in like this as far as putting this information together so that you can really find out what's going on with your physical body. All right. That's why we deal with this esoteric thing to teach you how to come back to you. All right. You know, no white man is going to come down out the sky on a white horse, Pegasus and clouds, and then come down to wipe your monkey ass. Hell no. You're going to have to learn how to, <laughs> you're going to, have to, learn how to do that yourself. All right. And what I mean by wiping your monkey ass is that there's no one's come to save you but yourself. Exactly. Even Obama told you that um, in his beginning ele- um, 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 what presidential election that the um, that the saving hand that you've been looking for been at the end of your own arm the whole time. I I agree with that shit. He's right on that. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, let us understand that. We get ready to say we out. Appreciate y'all for listening. Come All right. Back. Appreciate. You. No, we out, y'all. Peace, Peace brother L. Peace. Peace. Oh, hold on, hold on. We got, hold on. We got some callers on the line. Let me go to the hold line. On. Hold okay. on, I'm tripping. Okay, I'm here. Hold on, here. hold on. All right, we got caller one one one. This is out of state, out of the union, um, out the country. Peace, your line. Peace. Peace. Hey, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hey, hey, loud and clear. All right. Yeah, Eric, code 253. Eric, code 253, you on the line. Peace, peace. 253. Peace, peace. Yeah, peace. Hey, hey, this, uh, this Kurt, what's going on, huh? Peace, huh? 
What's up with you? Uh, I was checking in with you. You know what I mean? And, and Peace of Queen, I know she in the background. Oh, yeah, she back here. <laughs> Keeping me straight. Right, right, right. Well, I just want to give you a shout out, you know what I mean? And uh, know that uh, whenever y'all ready to come to the state, you know what I mean? We got the West Coast out of the country out here. Uh, oh, word. I can hear you. Whenever you ready for us to come, give us a call, man. Yeah, we'll come out there. Washington State. Word. Well, hold on, God. Let me Word. get you so, on the line. I want you to, let, let's see if we can create a little um, council here going on. Let me go to Erico 843. Peace. Peace. 843, Erico, you on the line. Y'all can hear me? A lot of clear. Yeah, we got you. Hello. Oh, all right. I, I, I wanted to get some more information. He said he was going to be in South Carolina, but... It was breaking up and you said well. So I, I yeah, we're gonna be in Columbia, South somewhere. Carolina this Saturday, two thirty, um, in, um at the park there in Columbia, South Carolina. Um all right, if you want more right. information, go what, to our what? calendar event on my website, www.dralemelbay.com. Go to the calendar and up and coming events and we got the flyer right there. All right, man, I appreciate it. Appreciate you, I bless you. All right, area code eight four three. Another area code eight four three. You on the line? Four seven one. Four seven one. Area code eight four eight four three. You on the line? All right. You gonna go to area code eight five zero eight five zero. You on the line? And that's Earlywood Park at South. North. At North Main Street, South Columbia, um, excuse me, Columbia, South Carolina in Columbia, starting at 2.30 um, this coming Saturday. All right, we got Erico 850, you on the line. Um, yeah, I had a question about, you were saying about some of the information that was uh, guarded, um, or just hidden from us because, well, it's like when you open up the Kundalini, what would you do with it, the, what you were saying? I thought well, it, was, it was about us constantly coming together and stuff like that to, well, like Bobby Hemme would say, keep the white man in his ass, the crack in his ass. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what's going to happen because you'll be able to use, just like you seen in the movie, Lucy, more than just 10% of the brain. Mm-hmm. If you yeah, notice, some, it came some of them got, remember, remember when she was going through her certain levels, she was killing up jokers left and right. Okay. Yeah. That's what Bobby Hemmett is talking about. Um, <laughs> you know, um, just, be, just, being able to, you, just being able to to resonate your energy vibration to that level will cause people to die just around you from not being able to handle your frequency. And that's okay. what that was showing. Um, that's what that was actually um, symbolically showing in that movie. Oh, okay. Because I was like, open up the Kundalini. I thought that was like what we were supposed to do consciously in order to, yeah, us, um, I guess, opening up. Yeah, yeah but you when you bring, it's on yeah, your, our enemies, or uh, what Bobby Henry would say. Yeah, well, you can. They're not going to be able to mess with you, just like they weren't able to, just in the movie, they weren't able to mess with Lucy. Exactly. What happens when, guess, yeah. what happened, what happened when, what happened when they try to come after her? Do you remember? Did you watch the movie? Uh-huh. It, 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 they had weapons, and she just she just threw them all up yeah. into the air and made yeah. all the weapons drop to the ground, and she just walked past them. Yeah. Um, you just make it sure, because they don't want to try to use the energy for wrong reasons or yeah, negative reasons. Well, like you, well, you know. for defensive reasons. Right. They killing us for right. no reason, folks right. slamming big people. Right, right. If you, right. If you, you know that we need to raise our energy. You know what I'm saying? We need to raise the Kundalini. You just seen what happened with um what's the brother name? Eric. Eric, brother Eric, um, who just killed in um in um New York and Staten Island. New out. York. When he, when the cop joked yoked them up and killed them. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now 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 what was the point? 
Now, what was the point of killing him? He was, guess what they said? He broke up a fight and was selling Lucy cigarettes. Now, when the fuck did a Lucy cigarette um, um, cause have to cause a person to die? But see, that's the environment that we in. remember. Um, a pack of Skittles, a pack of Skittles, and 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 um, and an Arizona tea, it will cause the death. You know, in a hoodie, of Trayvon yeah. Trayvon Martin. He won't break it into no car. Right, he wasn't breaking into somebody's car, nobody house. No. Nope. He's trying to he's trying to get home. So this is the okay. things in which that when we look at these injustices, and by these injustices keep happening, is actually going to just, now what now what Bobby said is that DNA is going to begin to start activating. And our pineal gland is going to come on, and we're going to be able to start exhibiting all these gifts and which that you're seeing in the movie Lucy. And this is what they're really afraid of, because it's yeah. going to have melanated people. And that's why they keep putting all these Europeans in these positions in order to throw it off and make you think that it's going to happen with them. It ain't happening. It's happening with you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> what they do... Dude got hit by a car. When he showed our ability with shamanism in the Green Mile, Stephen King got hit by a car. So they was like, "Don't you never show them niggas what they can do." Mm-hmm. Even even if you even if you got them playing retarded roles. Exactly. Y'all see Green Mile? If not, go back and watch it. Stephen King got hit by a car. By a truck. For um doing that. Mhm. So. We need to be meditating. We need to be activating our kundalini energy because that's the only thing that's going to happen. I seen a crazy. I said, now he wasn't even crazy. He was, This cracker was so angry. He beat up his own microwave. He was so <laughs> mad that they just killing us and ain't nobody doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And this goddess, she was at least taping the whole thing by the rollers over there like, come on, big guy, get up. They're like, man, you done did that. And then they lied, talking about he was breathing. But as soon as they left, People walked out like roaches coming out the thing on quick. I'm like, y'all ain't even mad. I was just business as usual. Yep. And this European yep. over here mad as hell, yo. And we just, it's like, it's business as usual. It's not okay. Nope. It's not okay, yo. Mm. Yeah, so that's what's going on. So, yeah, I gave the formula on how to do it. So the thing is, is begin to start practicing. For those who serious, practice. For those who ain't, do shit. And just keep watching shit happen. Mm-hmm. Continue being a watcher. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm talking about is for practitioners who's really trying to do this shit. I practice this shit every single goddamn day. Four, mm-hmm. five, six, seven, eight, nine, goddamn, ten times a day and more. For hours. You can ask my wife. When I wake up, when I go to sleep, I'm practicing this shit. So it's time to get serious. All right? Yes, it is. All right. You know what it's time for? It's time for the awakening. And we out, y'all. Peace. Peace. Peace.